Okay, today I'm going to be doing a compression test on my Subaru Supercharged Impreza. This is a stock standard EJ201 with no internal modifications at all and has currently roughly about 126,000 kilometres. Tools you'll need for this 10mm socket, 16mm socket with two extensions and remove spark plugs, and the compression tester. I picked this one up from my local super cheap store for about $60. This one tests up to 300 psi and has the needed flexible extension to get down into the spark plug holes. The first thing you're going to need to do is remove the fuse for the ignition, which is located in the kick panel on the driver's side, just behind here. And it'll be the 15 amp one right there. Second row from the bottom. So I'll just do that quickly. That way we'll stop the ignition from firing when we are testing. The fuse holder for, to pull the fuses is located on the passenger side, just in the fuse box compartment here. There's a little white, almost looks like a pair of tweezers. You use that there to pull the fuse out, so we'll do that. And there we have the fuse, 15 amp. These are the micro blade fuses. So now that's removed, I'll begin by removing the air filter on the driver's side. I've got a cold air intake system, so need to remove that first before I can access the spark plugs. Okay, so I'm just undoing my air filter at the moment so that I can access the spark plugs. Okay. All right, next thing I'll do is move those spark plugs on the side. Yeah, the Subaru design, the spark plugs are deep inside due to the way the boxer engine is designed. So what I've done to make things a bit easier is stick a bit of blue tacking into my 16mm socket. That'll hopefully pick up the spark plug nice and easy. So I'll just pop that in there like so. Okay, that's on. Okay, so a spark plug coming out. Feels about done. So hopefully, we should have the plug on the end. Nope, not quite. I'll just adjust the blue tack again. Give that another go. There we go. There we have our first plug. Ideally you want to do this compression test within an hour of the motor being switched off. You got to have it at warm operating temperature so you get proper results. If you try and do this with the cold motor, you'll probably get inaccurate results due to the clearances being much tighter. As the motor warms up and expands, you get proper readings.
Okay. Next bar plug. I'm just going to move around now to the other side. Okay, next thing we need to do is remove the windscreen washer water bottle. For that, we need a 10mm socket. That one is pretty straightforward to remove, it's just the two bolts at the top. Okay, once you do that, this will just pop out nice and easy, and then you can rest it just near your battery. It'll be supported by the hose there. Same thing again, just going to remove the two spark plugs, same as the other side, remove your spark plug leads, and then use your 16mm socket. I'll just reposition the camera. Okay, I'll just pop back on the 16mm socket. These ones are a little bit more difficult to reach due to the location of the battery. Same thing, put that in there. Just be careful too when you're undoing this not to short out your ratchet on the positive terminal on the battery. As I've had a couple of friends find out. You can do the electronics or the battery much good if that happened. Done. That plug there looks pretty good. And last but not least, number four. Strange, I don't know if the Australian and the American EJ series are the same with the spark plug numbering, but on the Australian model, number one is towards the front over on our driver's side. Number two is the front on the passenger side. Number three is the rear on the driver's side. And number four is this one that I'm undoing now. So I'm not too sure about that, but Anyway, oops, try it again. Okay, so now we have all the spar plugs removed. Okay, well that was a little easier than expected, it only took about 10 seconds to get that screwed in. So you really do need two people to perform this test. You need yours truly to check the readings, and then you need someone else to hold the accelerator flat to the floor, and then keep turning the motor until you, until you see the reading go up no further. So I'll just get you to turn the ignition on, put the pedal flat to the floor, Back to the floor. Work. Okay. We've got 162 PSI, which is absolutely spot on for that cylinder. So I'll move on to number two. Okay, we got number two in. Gonna get Damien to do a second one now. So foot flat to the floor, Damien, switch her on and start turning. I'll tell you when to stop. Wait. Let's try this again. Don't forget to release the pressure from the gauge each time you do it. Alright, Dane, foot flat to floor and go again. Wait. 
158. Now the pressures should be within 7 psi of each other for all four cylinders. So far we're looking excellent. Okay, now this is the cylinder that usually causes 99% of the problems in Subarus because what happens the way the fueling system works. Comes through over there, goes through those two banks of cylinders, comes across, goes to this cylinder and finally goes to the rear one here. And by the time it gets there, sometimes it doesn't have enough fuel. So, let's see what the reading is on this one. Alright, Damien, same thing again. Foot flat to the floor. Start her up and go. Work. 158 again. Okay, last but not least on number four of the other side. Okay, last but not least, number four. So I'll get Damien now again. Put your foot flat to the floor, Damien. Go. Work. That one's high. 168. I'll retest that one. Go again. Seventy. I don't know why that one there's so high, but anyway, that's the end of the test. Looks like a pretty good motor to me. It's all within, sort of, mostly within seven. But this cylinder here, I'll have to find out why this one is so high. All right. Thanks for watching.